guys, today on Dirt Lifestyle, we're gonna cover the most requested topic I've ever had on this channel, and that is paint. I usually don't show you guys how I paint the, my projects at the end of my fabrication videos, and that's because the camera gear that you're watching me on is really, really expensive. So I am paranoid as hell that paint is gonna stick to the lenses or some of this stuff, so I take all the gear out of here when I film normally. But today I have a workaround, so I wanna share some of these tips and tricks and techniques that I've gained over the years with some of you who are interested. I also wanna start this video by saying that I am not a professional painter. I've never been professionally trained. This is just a bunch of techniques that I've picked up from talking to old timers over the years or experience of me screwing up projects or having success with my projects whenever I'm painting the things that I build in the shop. Before we get started in this video, I wanna talk about something really basic but really important, and that is safety equipment. Get a respirator. I'm gonna make this fast, guys, I promise. A respirator can save your life. It will save your life. Not wanting to spend $25 is a dumb reason to get a respiratory illness. Um, it's gonna filter out 99% of the nonsense floating around the air whenever you're spray painting, or even if you're just sweeping stuff across your shop. All that stuff goes in your lungs. It doesn't wanna come out. So just do the preventative maintenance. I know it makes me look like a dork, but I put my respirator on when I sweep my shop out because this stuff seriously is bad for you. You don't wanna breathe it in. The second thing I wanna talk about is safety glasses. Most of us have them anyway. When you're painting, it's not a bad idea to wear them. Sometimes I'll forget, but I try to most of the time make it a point to wear safety glasses. I've been over to Buddy's house. We're all working on a project together. We're drinking beer. He's got the nozzle for his spray paint, pointed his face, doesn't even know it, goes to paint a fender, <laughs> he sprays it right into his eye. Safety glasses can prevent a very easy accident from turning into a trip to the ER, so it's worth wearing them. The third and last thing I wanna talk about is gloves. Just get a box of nitro gloves. I buy the 100 pack, they're super cheap, they're not very durable, but they're perfect for this kind of work because I'll come out here, um, I'll do a second or a third coat, so I put on my super cheap nitro gloves, I do the work, and then whenever I go back in the house, I throw them away, and I didn't burn up a lot of money, but I did protect my hands. Paint will absorb through your skin too. It's not good to get in anywhere. So it's, this, that's it, that's the end of the little safety thing. I just wanted to stress the basic safety equipment. For those of you who are new and might not know any better, in my experience, the paint preparation is easily as important as the paint job itself. So I go through, I scuff everything up really good with emery cloth and with sandpaper, and I just wanna make sure that it's got a nice surface for the paint to bite into. Then I wipe it all down really well with either a paint prep product, which is what I use today, or denatured alcohol. The stuff I use today is from a company called Eastwood. It's called pre-painting prep. You spray it on real good, you wipe it off real good, you let it dry, it's very simple. Then I go through, I blow off everything with an air nozzle really well, I get into every nook and cranny because I wanna make sure that none of that pre-prep product is stuck in, in a joint somewhere and then I try to paint over it and it won't adhere. So I get it nice and dry, then I turn on the heat to the shop. Even in the summer in the Pacific Northwest, it could be cold in the summer. It could be 60 degrees in the middle of July. So I turn on my heater, I try to get it between 70 and 80 degrees because I think that this really helps the paint set up at the correct time and I think that you just get a better finished product overall. Here's a trick that I learned a long time ago. If you soak your spray paint cans in hot water, it softens up the paint, makes it a little bit easier to agitate. So whenever you go to shake it, because it's softer paint, it's supposed to mix a little better. This could be a placebo effect, but I've always felt like it works pretty good. This is the paint we're using today. I've never even heard of this stuff until recently. This is a two-part epoxy paint. So here's the difference between normal paint and epoxy paint. With normal paint, you spray paint your surface, part of the paint evaporates off and it just leaves what is left. It leaves like a hardened paint. With epoxy paint, it has a valve on the bottom that you depress, it mixes two separate components, and then it turns into a completely separate component because it's an epoxy. So it is chemically curing the paint instead of drying. So this dries, this chemically cures. In theory, this is gonna be a much harder paint whenever it is done with its curing and drying process. And I'm very intrigued by that. I've wanted to find something that is a step between this and powder coat, and I think this could be that missing link. With powder coat, it's great, it's durable. Um, you know, it is really expensive, but it's really good for a number of reasons. But the problem is, if I wanna add an awning onto this roof rack later, and I need to weld two tabs onto it, you buzz a part of the powder coat off, you add your tab, and then you have to sandblast the entire thing before you powder coat the rack again. So. That's a huge bummer. It's really expensive to do multiple powder coats. But with this, I have the flexibility of adding things to the rack and I can still have a really hard paint. So I'll let you guys know in the future how this turns out, but I'm very excited to try it out. 
All right, we're ready to paint. I switched over to an action camera because I am comfortable getting this dirty and have paint on it, but my other expensive gear, it is far, far away from here. Now, I've been shaking this can up. You're supposed to shake them up for two minutes, which is a really long time. I've probably got, I don't know, a minute and a half of shaking. Now I'm going to mix the two parts together. So this little cap comes off of the very top, and then you push it on there. There we go. So now the two parts are mixing together inside of the can. Now once you depress that, you've got 48 hours to use this can, and then after that, it's it's over. Your, your window is done. So I'm gonna shake this up real good, and then we'll start painting. Now I normally clear out a little bit of the first part of the can. There we go, because at first it's usually just a little bit of clear that comes out, and uh, I wanna get to the paint. The plan is three coats of primer and three top coats. I think this is gonna give us our best finish. I start really light. I do what's called a tack coat. I've always been told that a tack coat really helps the paint adhere. I don't know if that's true, but it's again, it's just one of those things that I've been doing over the years and it seems to work. So I'm gonna go real light, the first coat, give it 10 minutes or so, then we're gonna throw our second coat on, give it 10 minutes or so, and then throw our third coat on. As you can hear, I agitate the can a lot between spraying. So it's not like I just spray the whole can out in one shot. I like to agitate the, the paint as I go to continue it, to continue the mixing process. So you're just gonna see me do that throughout the entire video. Hopefully this shows up in the action camera, but if you look real close, you'll notice that you can see bare metal under the paint still. So we don't want so much coverage that all we can see is paint and we don't want so little coverage that you can't see paint at all and you just see bare metal. We want something in between. This first coat is gonna be really light and then we're gonna definitely go heavier on our second coat and get full coverage. You're also gonna notice a ton of paint just going into the air. That's just kind of the nature of the beast when you're painting stuff like tube. It's way easier to paint a fender or something that's big and flat. And unfortunately, when you're painting tube, a lot of your paint goes to waste. It's just what comes with the territory. fired up the heater, I wanna make sure that it stays warm in there. It's not too cold out, but it's cold enough that I wanna make sure that I keep the temperature up. So I'm gonna wait 10 minutes, and then we're gonna get back to it. On the second coat, I'm gonna go way heavier, and you're gonna notice in the background, you're gonna hear the heater. I'm gonna leave it on all the way through till the end of the day whenever I lock up the shop, because I want it to be hot in here. I, I don't want it to be cold. Outside's about 45 degrees right now. I've been warming the shop all day, and I wanna keep it warm. I think that paint cures so much better whenever you have it in that recommended temperature span. Second coat went on well. I'm not gonna do a third coat of primer. It covered great. I don't have any anywhere that I can see through. Whew, that stuff is crazy how fast it is handleable. It doesn't even look wet. It's definitely a whole nother ball game over normal spray paint, so. Um, I'm gonna give it 10 minutes, I'm gonna go in. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start throwing on our, our primary coat. I might do three coats of this, we'll just have to see. It depends on the kind of coverage I get. If I can get away with uh, doing just two coats, then that's what I'll do. out here quick tip so you don't have to wait 10 minutes it's uh, different for every project sometimes you gotta wait more sometimes you get away with less what I normally do when I'm getting to the thicker coats I look at it and see if it's shiny you can see what is wet by how shiny it is and you don't want it shiny it's that simple so whenever you go back and think you're ready for a recoat look over everything really well with a light and you'll see if it's shiny in some spots, it'll be kind of like matte in the other spots. You'll know that the matte is drier than the shiny spots. Wait till all those shiny spots go away and then you're ready for your next coat. This is gonna be my final coat. Even if I have to shake up two more cans, whatever, I'm gonna make this my final coat. I'm gonna go real thick 
and without any runs. If we have any runs, it's not the end of the world. You let it dry, you sand the run out, and then you just do one more coat. But I think that I could do it without any runs. It's really warm in the shop, and that helps a ton with keeping things from running because it dries faster. We are all done for the night. I need to let this cure. It is thick in here. I need to get the hell out of here. So I'm gonna kill the lights. We're gonna let this cure overnight. I'm gonna check back with you in the morning. All right, let's take a look and see how we did. That actually has a really nice finish. Hopefully you'll be able to see it in the camera. Let's see if I can get it to focus right on that spot. It's got like a texture to it. It looks very similar to what you're gonna expect out of a powder coat. I really like that it's not super glossy either. Um, I, I go nuts whenever I see things that are too glossy. So the semi-gloss black is definitely my favorite tone for a project like this because it's not just screaming at you whenever you're looking at it in the sunshine. I think it turned out good. We do have a couple things to talk about. I didn't address the fact that I use body filler on all my seams. It's just personal preference. I've always thought that this kind of thing looks better than a painted weld. So I use body filler on all my seams for all my projects. Same thing with this bumper. Um, this is the same deal. I, I, I grind down the welds. I put a little bit of body filler on there because I just think that it's a, a much more finished looking project at the, end of the, at the end of the build. One last thing we need to address. I couldn't get paint under there. So all I'm gonna do is lift this bad boy up. I'm gonna move these around and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of spray paint and I'm gonna cover this spot here, that spot there, and then the other ones around it and then this will have full coverage. it guys it's a very simple process if uh, you want to see fabrication stuff I have a video where I fabricate this roof rack from scratch so if that interests you I'll put a link in the description below you can click on that link and it'll take you uh, right to that video if you enjoy this video and you see more videos like it subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up if you want to help support the channel you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com we have t-shirts hats stickers we even have a patreon link there if you want to contribute in that way if you want to follow me on social media I'm at dirt lifestyle Nate we'll see you next time